Hi everyone. Um, my name's Ian Brown um, and I'm talking to you today from Wollongong, which is about an hour south of Sydney. And I'm actually from the University of Wollongong. And what we, this is my first um, webinar um, live with you. So I'm hoping, hopefully it's gonna go very well. And hopefully we're all gonna learn something from this afternoon. Um, I'm hoping there's not gonna be any mistakes. And if there happens to be, we'll just have to live with it and we'll, we'll try to get through it. But again, welcome to everybody. Um, I'm not sure whether there's lots and lots of people behind it because I'm not getting any interaction on both sides, but um, I'm, today we're going to actually be talking a little bit about drawing um, and some of the things that you might be able to do in these crazy, crazy times that we're in at the moment. Um, we're a bit the same as you, I would imagine. We've got some lockdown and we've got lots and lots of kids who are um, at home or working from home. Um, and most of our, our children here in Australia um, have been on and off. They, they, some, they're back at school at the moment. And then in some of our states, they've actually gone back home again. Um, and early childhood settings are no different. So what's happening is, is that we've got a, a very, a variation in lots of things. So we thought we would give you some lots of ideas that you might be able to do things from home and, and work with your, your children. Um, I'd like to be able to sort of spend a bit of time just talking to you a little bit about the sorts of things that you can do. And you'll notice that if you've looked at the program for the next 10 weeks, today what we're going to be talking about is mainly drawing. Um, and the idea was that we didn't want to sort of have lots and lots of activities that you were needed, all these different sorts of resources that either you don't have at home um, or you had to actually go out and find. So, because what we'd like you to do is to actually use the things that are in your own kitchen. And I'm sitting here in my own kitchen um, and, and lots of the things that I'm going to explain to you today are very, very simple ones that you can actually just find at home. Um, and you only just need some minimal amount of resources. So the intention of the, the webinars is to, well, there's probably about three things that we're going to do. One of them is that um, we, we want to give you some knowledge and some understanding about some of the not too theoretical, um, and sorry, let me slow down a little bit because I, I tend to get carried away and then I, I talk really fast. So I'll slow it down. Um, what we want to do is we want to give you a little bit of the background about um, children and their development and creativity and why it's important. And then what we would like to do is give you some practical activities. And I want to inter interact it with some videos from some, um, just to make it a little bit more interesting for you so that you're not sort of listening to my talking head going on for an hour. Um, and then certainly we'd like to get some um, questions from you. And, and see if there's some things that you have some questions or um, things that I might be able to answer for you. So please feel free to do that at the end, which would be really quite nice. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to switch between, um, I have a PowerPoint presentation and I'll talk over the top of that one. So I'll just whiz on the sharing a screen at the moment and we'll start with our first slide and what we, whoops, sorry. Let me just go back. Okay, so what we're going to do is I want to talk to you first of all about um, what what you as parents could be doing because drawing drawing tends to come naturally to the children. Um, and one of the things that I would like to emphasize in nearly every of the webinars that I've sorted out is the idea of of you working with your with your children and doing things together. So it's about communicating, it's about talking, it's about doing things. And one of the things that comes through quite a bit is the idea about whether, whether or not you as a parent has to be a good artist or you have to be able to draw very well to be able to work with your children. And I thought it would be a nice idea because, because I can't make this interactive. Um, I thought it would be a good idea just to give you some ideas about how you could actually improve your drawing ability to start off with. And the first one I would like to talk about is, um, this is a book by Betty Edwards. And Betty Edwards, this book was written way back in 1979. 
And it's a really good resource. If you're looking for something to improve your own drawing skills, and I'm not talking about your, your, your preschool children at this point, I'm just talking about you and the sorts of things that you might be able to do to make sure that you're a little bit more confident. Um, this book talks about the left side of the brain and it talks about the right side of the brain. Now the left side of the brain is that bit where it's very sequential, your brain you know, does things in order, it's logical. If you're gonna do maths, it would use your left mode of your brain. Your right side of your brain is, is a creative side of your brain. And that's the side that looks at things like the, the visual sides of things or the spatial sides of things. And that's why some people are really good at sort of um, navigating things that to do with space. Um, if you were walking down through the street and you're, you're able to avoid crowds, and, and certainly in this pandemic time, this is the time that you want to avoid them, but that's when the right side of your brain switches in. And the right side of your brain actually gets you to sort of perceive what's around you and see sorts of things. Now, what tends to happen in this is that your left mode of your brain becomes much more dominant and what it does is it, it just clicks in all of the time because that's the part that's where you do your maths or if you're an engineer you spend a lot of the time in your left mode um, if you're a creative person you're an artist sometimes you spend a lot of time on the right side of it so what betty edwards did back in 1979 she said we, we need to actually help people to draw and the best way to draw is to get some ideas about how that you could actually do that so I'm just going to show you a video now, and it just sort of introduces the idea about what drawing on the right side of the brain might do. Chari, could we have that video? Okay, so what, what you noticed in that video was that, and I don't expect everybody to be able to draw as well as those, the students that were there, but these are the sorts of activities that we do with our students. These aren't the ones that you would do with your, your toddlers or your preschoolers, but they're just good for parents to be able to get some ideas about the sorts of things and how to switch over onto that right mode. Now you'll notice that on the left-hand part of your screen, hopefully you can see it, there's a horse which is upside down. And the reason that it's upside down is that part of this, this idea of switching to your right side of your brain is to try and get you not to focus on all of the details when you're doing a drawing. So it's what part of it is, and the interesting thing is, is that if you're a counterfeiter and you're going to counterfeit money, or if you're going to counterfeit stamps or things like that, what a counterfeiter does is they actually turn the money upside down. And they actually, people who develop stamps do exactly the same thing. They turn a stamp upside down and they draw it from an upside down view. And the reason that they do that is that because your brain starts to look only at things like lines and then it starts to look at things like shapes. And so some of the activities that they've got in this book for example, on the right hand side, that chair, the idea is that you're going to be looking at the shapes on the outside, the negative shapes, not the positive. You're not looking at the chair, you're looking at the shapes and you will find that you will actually draw much, much better if you do it in that way. These are called contour drawings. And what happens here is, and this would be really nice if you could do this before next week, is you just take off your shoe or something like that it's got a lot of detail. Now that sounds crazy because you think it would be harder to draw something with detail, but in actual fact, it's much easier to draw something that's got a lot of detail because you can actually see the lines and you can draw all the contours on it. So I'm going to challenge you between now and next week 
to actually take one of those, take an activity, take something like a, a, a shoe, a handbag is a good one to do if you've got that, and just put it down beside you and, and just follow the lines and draw. And you'll be surprised at how well that drawing is actually going to work and how much it's going to happen. So what are we going to do then if we're, if we're in lockdown situation and we've got things that we want to be able to draw? Now, what I'd like to do now is to talk to you about what you're going to do with your children. Because you can actually go to, now let me just turn this off for a moment, and if you've hopefully got back to me. If I went through my, my drawers over here at the moment, and I'd opened them up and got a few things out. These are the sorts of things that you could actually use with kids really, really easily. Um, and you could actually work with preschoolers to, to make some really nice drawings out of these. And they work in the same way as the Betty Edwards drawing does for adults, is that you're actually getting children to actually look at the outside of the shapes and, and get them to draw it. Now, it's, to draw it something like this at that angle would be fairly difficult for a younger child. But certainly it's not too difficult if you actually hold it this way for them and they just follow it. And if I was doing this with little kids now, I would be saying, all right, let's have a look at this. What is it? It's a, it's a whisk. Um, what do you do with a whisk? You, you know, you whisk up eggs or you whisk up milk or whatever it might be. So a simple straight, this one, for example, is a, a masher, a potato masher, quite, quite, you know, the kids aren't going to hurt, hurt themselves with it. And then what you do is you actually talk to your child about, look at all the different shapes that you can find, run your fingers over the top of it. So if you took this one for a line, these are just made up of lines. I would get some little kids to say, all right, let's go grab our finger and we're going to go take the line for a walk and we're going to come over onto this side of it. And so what you can then start to do is you can talk about things like shape because you've got curved shapes and then you can look at this one and you can say, all right, you've got some pointy shapes here and they're joined together by some lines. So you could actually draw it this way if you wanted to or you could actually draw it this way and get children to actually do some drawings. Now, if I just switch back to my to my um, PowerPoint again. If you look at these, here's some really, really simple things that you can find in your kitchen cupboard and you can find in your drawers. And you'll look, you'll see that they're all different sorts of um, whisks and different shapes and whatever. And so this is what I would be doing doing with, with, with children is that I would be going through the drawers and saying, which ones do you think we can draw? And which ones do you think are going to be a bit of fun to be able to, to, to get um, some drawings with? And if you look at this one, I, I would be talking about circles, I would be talking about lines, I would talk about talking about lines and taking them for a walk. Um, and that's what we, we, we find with this one. I'll just stop that sharing for a moment. Because the other thing is that what you're going to be asking is, what, what sort of materials should I be using with, um, with my children? Now, obviously, um, you know, we've got lots of different pencils. Now, a pencil's not a pencil. I've got all of these things here that I want to talk to you about. But a pencil, for example, when you go to buy a pencil from a shop, this sounds crazy, but the, the pencils that you buy in a shop are actually called HB pencils. So they're the, the ones that you would just go in into a, um, into a shop and ask for a, 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 a pencil and they would sell you one that looks like this and it's actually got HB on the end of it. Now, I don't know if you know what HB means, but it actually means H is for hard and B is for black. So it's saying that it's a hard black pencil, HB. But the other thing is that you can buy other pencils and the other pencils are things like a 3B or a 6B or a 2B. So what you tend to be buying then is a 6B is a six black pencil. Now why I'm telling you this is because quite often if you just use a HB pencil, it's really 
difficult to see and it's a difficult pencil to be able to draw with. Most artists would never ever use a HB because it's too hard. So you need something which is really quite soft. If you look at this one, for example, this is a, this is a um, graphite pencil and it actually comes off on it because it's really nice and soft. And that's really easy to draw with. So most artists would actually draw with something like a graphite pencil or something. So sometimes we set children up to fail because we give them some materials that aren't really, um, you know, it's a bit more difficult to use. So just, if, I, if you had a choice and you go into an art shop and you're looking for a pencil for your child, I would not use a HP. I would use a 3B or even a 6B because they are, they're much softer and they're quite dark in what you're doing. So that goes the same thing with, with felt tip pens. All right, if, you, if you're using a really fine felt tip pen, that's more difficult to draw than it is if you're using one of these sort of um, Sharpie type pens, which are quite thick. And what happens is that, that for some reason we don't think, you know, you've got to watch because you don't want it all up your walls and all over your, your table and things like that if you're going to have little kids with, with, with textures going like this with felt tip pens. But if they can, can control them reasonably well, then it's really quite nice to, and I'll show you some pictures later of my grandchildren, because I use them as my, my um, people that, that I'm using in the videos. Um, and you'll see with them that the drawings are much more interesting, bold, they're nice bold drawings, and, they're, and you, you've got lots of, um, you know, when, you, when you're holding them up, a, 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 a drawing that's been done with a HB pencil isn't very exciting at all. A drawing that's been done with a big, thick, bold texture is much more interesting to draw with and it's much more interesting to look at. So think about even colours. Sometimes, you know, using, using colours all the time with, with kids sounds a good idea. And, and, and children like using colour, but sometimes, you know, it, you, just the old, good old black ones are probably... Um, going to give you a, a much nicer sort of drawing. The other thing is, is that what else could you use apart from those sorts of things? Well, the other ones that you could use, it doesn't have to be, I mean, if you use, this is ink, you just have to control that. So if I'm talking, if I was using ink, I would make sure that I was using it with a, a, a non-toxic one that I wouldn't be using with um, toddler, you know, babies. I would be definitely using it with the one, with our toddlers are just, or oh, sorry, our early childhood students who are just about ready to go to school or something, or they will get that everywhere and then you'll have a big mess. But quite often you don't need to be using expensive things. You could actually go out in the yard and grab some sticks like I've got here. And you could use these because mark making is quite different in, when you're using sticks and things and when you're using a pencil or when you're using a um, a felt tip pen. And of course, other things such as crayons, crayon, I've got them here, crayons and chalk. Um, and it doesn't matter what you want to use with those sorts of things. Take your children out onto the, onto the concrete and get them to actually explore those textures that they're going to get on the concrete, etc. from those sorts of things. The other one that's a really interesting thing is, is mark making, and we're going to be talking about mark making a bit more um, as we're going through. But let me just show you now. Um, I'll just whiz you back onto uh, sharing my screen, and we'll have a look at um, what we've got here. So these are our kitchen utensils that we're doing, and then I'm just going to show you a, nut, a quick video now, video two, which is about using kitchen utensils with a really easy drawing. So little kids could do this quite easily. Thank you, Chari.
So you can take those very, very simple shapes that, that we just saw in the last video, where we're talking about things like circles and, and this is the part of the communication that's really important as you're talking through. Let, let the children actually draw as they're going through, but at the same time, I would be asking things like, what shape can you see there? Oh, I can see a circle. What shape might that be? Oh, I think that's a square. Now, you've got to remember that, a, that a, when you have lots and lots of dots together, then it'll, lots of dots form a line. And then when you start to take that line for a walk and bring it back around and join it up, it becomes a shape. So a line becomes a, a dot, become a line. A line becomes a shape. And then if you've got this shape and then you start to repeat, you've got a shape and a shape and a shape, then you've got a pattern. So there's three concepts there that you could actually talk to your children about. You could talk about line, you could talk about dots, you could talk about shape, and then you could talk about pattern. So if you have a look at this one, this is slightly more difficult in what you're doing. And this is where I think it would be really nice if you were sitting with your children and you were actually drawing some of these shapes with them as they were starting to draw as well. So let's have a, a very quick one, have a look at this one. And we'll just um, have a look at the, uh, how do you draw a saucepan if you were a parent and, and your kids are sort of watching you. So Chari, could you just show the next one for us? Hi there, welcome to Draw Stuff Real Easy. And today, what am I going to draw today? Uh, saucepan. <laughs> I knew I was going to draw so. Okay, you want an oval on the top. Draw two lines coming down like that. And then you're going to want to have this kind of fitting on the side, okay? Imagine this is a prism coming out like that. So it probably wants to come to a smaller end here and do a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle there like that around there. And there's probably kind of around there as well like that. Let's see what we get. I'm here and draw all the way around the outside and down. Then you want to start on the inside. Uh, just keep it in like that and then you can maybe do some shading like that come down and around there um, go wiggle wiggle up and around that would be the kind of the metal part of it or it there which is probably held on with little bolts or something like that so you may want to Kind of shade that part because that'll probably be black plastic or something like that, won't it? And then we'll probably have some shading there, shading round there, and shading round there. To put it on the table, as I always say. There you go. What do you think of that? Oh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> if you enjoyed that, keep coming back to draw stuff real easy on YouTube. <laughs> In the meantime, you keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye. So, if you look at that one, you can you could actually do. What I'm trying to do here is to give you some, some ideas for yourself to be able to improve your drawing skills. And then you could actually then come across and maybe help your kids in terms of um, how do you put a bit of shading if you wanted to do that with younger children, or how do you make it look like it's a bit more three dimensional. And they're not things that are gonna come naturally to children. Children are just going to explore and use the materials and, and draw something. And I've got some examples in a moment that I'll show you how we, you can work with, with younger children and, and using something common again that you can find in the kitchen. Here's some nice ideas that you might be able to just do yourself and then you might be able to work with your children and do the same idea. And that's the idea of actually doing a really simple shape and then turning it into some sort of pattern using some kitchen utensils and things that you can actually find in your kitchen. Here's another one which is just a nice bit of patterning again. And these might be ones that you could actually um, cut out with children and you could just get them to rearrange it and put it onto a, onto a page after they've done some drawings. So they've done drawings of some forks and some spoons, which sounds boring, but in actual fact, that's, that's something that um, the children actually will do quite easily. 
So what I did with my grandchildren was that I thought, well, what am I going to find in the kitchen that I'm going to, um, that everybody has in their kitchens? And that was the idea of this whole series is that we're going to do things that you can just find easily and you don't have to go out and buy expensive materials. Um, so what I thought I would use was just, I went and bought some vegetables. Um, and so the selection in the vegetables are really important. If you have a look at the ones that I've got here, I just gathered them all together. Um, something like, you know, your mushrooms, for example. And this is what, if you go right back to the beginning of what I talked about today, is that um, things that have a lot of detail on them, which you may think of really difficult, are an actually fact, um, are actual fact as, as probably sometimes easier to draw than something which is really plain. And it's really interesting that my youngest granddaughter, she's the one, she went for tomatoes um, because she just thought that they were, you know, that they were interesting. But why, what I've got here is lots of different vegetables so that in what you can do, and here's some of the materials that we used. Um, and next week when we're doing printing, I'll talk to you a bit more about paints. Um, so if you look at these vegetables, your cabbage, for example, has got all those fantastic lines. Um, and you can follow those lines and I would get little kids to actually put their fingers on the lines and take, go for a walk with those lines on the cabbage. And then if you look at the pawpaw in the foreground, what you've got there is you've got lots of little seeds and lots of little information in there as well. So all your asparagus have got those tips on it where you can actually draw those things. So, and the other one that we enjoyed doing was the pineapple from the outside, not necessarily the pineapple from the inside because it's a bit boring. Side. And then we cut up a capsicum because capsicums have got fantastic little things, seeds inside it, and little pockets where you could actually draw as well. So here's my granddaughter Riley, and she's she selected the the tomatoes. That's what she thought would be nice to be able to draw. And you'll notice that I've, I'm using the thick textures with them. They had a choice of what they would like to use, and she went for the for the thick ones. And this is her doing some drawings and doing some colouring in. This is my other granddaughter, her name's Isla, and she's cut the um, cucumber in half. And, and she, we talked about all of the little seeds that are inside and the lines that are there. And then she's off she goes doing it. And then we got a fennel because they're, they're really fun with all of the fluffy bits on the top of it and the sorts of things that she can do there. And then you, here you can see some of the really nice drawings that are actually coming through. And it's, they're using the, the, the texture, the big fat texture, the felt tip pen is bold and um, bright and it's really quite nice for kids to be able to use that. So what is it that we actually mean by drawing? What is it we mean by mark making? So mark making is something which is where, where students can actually just, or children can actually just draw across the surface. So the surface could be paper, or it could be coloured paper, or it could be, um, it could be textured concrete outside with, a, with chalk, and they make a mark. And that mark is important to them. So they can actually um, try not to do things that are really small and tight because they can actually move out and get those mark makings happening and make it nice and strong. So let's, oh, that's good spelling on that one, early. Um, let's, let's share with you now, and I'll ask Chari to show us our next video. Um, Hi, my name's Gay Lindsay. Today we're going to be thinking about drawing and mark making in early childhood settings. From the beginning of human history, people have had the urge to create and make meaning and communicate their ideas using visual media. And it's no different in early childhood settings. Children, when we provide them with materials, quickly discover that they can make a mark and have an effect using materials. And that's a really exciting process to be involved in as an educator. It's actually really important that we know the materials and the methods that we can use to support children to communicate their ideas and to express meaning and make ideas using materials. 
For young children, making marks can actually be a form of cognition. So as children use materials and express their ideas visually, it can help them to express their thinking visually. And this can be a form of communication, even for children who are pre-literate and pre-verbal. As they make marks, they're thinking through their ideas and expressing them using visual media. So as educators, as I said, it's really important to know how to support that process for all children that we work with. For early childhood educators, it's really important that we're familiar with the materials that we use with young children so that we can effectively support them in their processes of meaning making, mark making and expression of their thinking. So I can only encourage you as we go through this video to think through the materials and the processes that can effectively support you to work with young children in their mark making. So that message from Gay, Gay Lindsay is one of my colleagues from the University of Wollongong and what we, she was talking about there was the whole idea of using using the in, implements and um, the materials that you can actually find. And it doesn't have to, as I said right from the beginning, it doesn't need to be anything expensive. You can use just pencils, you can use felt tip pens. The other great one is charcoal. And you can buy charcoal from, a, from art um, shops and we have little, um, cheap shops here in Australia that you know, I'm sure you have them as well. We, we call them $2 shops and what you can go into there and actually buy some of those materials. Now, you know, something like charcoal is a lovely thing to be using because it's soft and it makes really dark marks and it's really good for little children to actually push it out. Now you're going to get dirty and that's the other nice part about it is and, and you, if you don't let them get dirty, then they're not going to be able to control it. The, I, I always say with charcoal is one of those things. Is the first one is to get it all over your hands. The second time you use charcoal is to get it over your hands and your face. And then the third time you use charcoal, you'll see little children starting to control it and they, and they work with it quite well. So let's, let's um, go now and have a look at this last video that I want to show you. And it's just about what sort of drawing implements should you be using. So Chari, can we just watch that next one? So when you're choosing drawing implements, as well as the typical pencils, crayons and felt pens, you may like to explore some other materials that make rich and meaningful marks. So materials like graphite pencils, lead pencils, drawing pens, charcoal, and even materials like chalk and pastels, so that we can support children to explore lots of different opportunities to make marks. When you're choosing pencils, make sure you're choosing really soft ones so that they make a rich and black mark. If you're providing children with the opportunity to do a drawing, consider just providing them with the black on white option. Colours are great, but sometimes when children are making meaning or drawing their ideas, a simple black line can be really effective. So if you're going to do some drawing around children's theories, for example, you might provide them with good quality Sharpie pens. Then they can really express their thinking with clear, black straight lines. So you, we can support children to really communicate their ideas using these materials. Other materials to try are things like charcoal, which young children absolutely adore. The babies will enjoy this material as well. So if you're again providing children with really large pieces of paper, then when you provide them with charcoal, and the thick stubby ones are most effective. The, the skinny willow ones will break really easily. But if you buy the really thick ones, then children can actually make really black lines and they get a lot of pleasure out of seeing their movements have a rich and meaningful mark on the paper. So that black, black mark is very exciting for young children. It's really important when you're choosing materials with young children to choose high quality materials, to test them out and make sure they work effectively, and to think through the processes that you hope children will engage in, so that when you provide the materials, you're presenting them beautifully, making them welcoming for young children, and supporting children richly in their mark making.
So here's, I mean, I, here's an example of an Australian artist. Her name is Debbie McKinnon. She's quite well known um, in Sydney as an as a, um, adult artist. And you can see what she's using here is that up in the top left hand corner, she has, is actually making brushes and implements to actually draw with rather than just using, you know, found pens and pencils and things like that. She dips them into the ink and then you can see that the drawings over on the right hand side have just been done using these found objects and what a fun way to do things with kids where you could actually just go out, pick up some sticks and twigs and things like that, turn them into some sort of drawing implement, dip them into some black ink and you can see over on the top right hand side all of the different sorts of um, mark making that she's doing. I mean, and she's a professional artist. And quite often, some of these things are very much like the, the, the type of naive art that you see coming from, um, from children. So when you're thinking about what sort of utensils could you use for mark making, using it from our kitchen, let me just pop off here for a moment. You know, these are some things that I, you know, this is one of just one of those um, uh, fibre, um, dusters to get rid of the dust. But if you got something like this and you dipped it into some ink or some really watery paints and then you just scraped it on and, and children were just sort of getting some um, different sorts of patterns happening or they were doing some lovely sorts of um, artworks which are big on large pieces of paper. Something like this is really interesting, very, very cheap, something that you find at home and something that you could actually use. This one's a great one. And what happens here is it's one of those things that you um, clean your dishes with, but you open the end of it and you're supposed to put detergent into there. But what you can do is you can just put um, paint into that. And then what you do is you can scrape with it, you can dab and you can get lots and lots of different marks. And so this is not painting, this is actually drawing. So you're actually drawing things from it by actually putting um, watery paint into here and allowing children to go, you know, have some fun. You could fill it with water and just get out into the sun and let and get them to draw onto the concrete or onto the pavement and then let it just disappear and then they could draw some more. So that'd be fun things to do. Or this one, this one's a, a, just a, a scrubbing thing that you would use in the kitchen um, in your, to clean your pots. But what it is, if you dip that into paint and then get to draw with it, you'll get some lovely sort of um, things happening as well. So they're just things that you would find everywhere in your kitchen and that you could possibly use, wash them up later and, and they should be fine. So let me just go back on to um, sharing my screen with you. And then I've got, I wanna to talk to you now about some of the things that we're doing. So what do we mean by drawing and mark making? Well, you should have that now. The idea is just to explore shapes, explore lines, get in and, 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 and push things around a little bit. And that's where children really start to enjoy what's happening. What I'm gonna do over the next few weeks is talk about how important it is to have a language with children about art. And today we've talked about lines, we've talked about shapes, we've talked about pattern, um, we've talked about color, the sorts of things that you would be doing and, and next week we're going to be talking about printing and, and combining colors and overlapping of shapes and things like that but for today all of the things that go with drawing are things like you know your, your drawing your lines your patterns your shapes etc so it's important that we start building up the vocab with kids and we start talking to young children about those sorts of things and you say to them what is this it's a line what is this it's a pattern or it's a shape. And what if I have two shapes, then it becomes a pattern. So the vocab is important. So when you're talking about art, there's, the, you know, there, there's probably some words that you would um, need to build up and the sorts of things that you start to do. So as I said, over the next few weeks, what we'll be doing is we'll be building up our vocab so that we can actually talk to children about the sorts of things that 
when you you go and you you know later on down the track in a few weeks time we'll be talking about how do you look at an artwork with little kids and how do you talk about that and how do you understand it and unpack that so which will make it interesting the other important thing is what do you believe and what do you value about art and is it important i mean there's a lot of people that sort of see you know maths and engineering and all of those things are important there are some parents that think art is just a bit of a waste of time but in actual fact art has some really interesting things because it it allows kids to actually um be creative it you know drawing allows um children to be able to use their imagination so you take it to the next step what do you think this might be what does it look like how can we turn it into something else? Um, if you're talking with your children the whole time, then you're also improving their communication skills. The other one that's the most important thing about art and doing artworks is that they actually um, help with problem solving. So it's, you know, there's some cognitive areas that, um, that art actually helps you with. And, that, and those are the sorts of things. It also helps you with your emotional intelligence, it helps you with your fine motor skills where you're doing tiny little things. It's helping you with your gross motor skills where you're actually moving your arms and you're actually pushing things around. Um, and then the other nice thing about it is that you're actually connecting with other people and you're talking about your art and, you, and you're getting excited about the sorts of things that are happening. So communication is important in this funny time that we're at at the moment. We're in this pandemic, we're here together, we've got our children at home probably more than we would normally have them at home. Um, and so it's important for you as parents to be able to communicate and talk and, um, and spend some time just doing it. Now, art and drawing is one of those areas where you can just sit beside them, you can do some drawing, they can do some drawing, and then you can collect it together. You don't have to be creative, you don't have to be artistic, you can just enjoy what's actually happening, and that's that's an important side. So as we go through in the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the value of art and the value of arts in a child's life and the sorts of things that you might be able to do to improve those um, things that are coming through. Setting up a little nature exploration table is a nice thing so that they can look at the shapes and they can look at the lines and they can find bits and pieces there. Now, I'm just going to finish off before we have questions um, and talk about this Voices of Children project, which you've probably heard a little bit about. Um, if you go back, there's some videos on the website that, are, that actually talk about this. But what we're going to do in the next 10 weeks is that we're going to actually start a project which is going to culminate in a, an exhibition of children's work. Now, it's unusual to have ch younger children using, um, you know, iPhones and iPads and things like that to actually record. But so what I would like you to do is that we're going to actually in the next few weeks be, show you how to upload some images. But what I would like to do between this week and next week is to, for you to actually get your children to actually take some pictures of their artwork. Pictures like I have of them doing their works together working with you as a, um, a parent and a child using some of the kitchen things that we've talked about. And I want you to hold on to those images because in the next few weeks, what we're going to do is we're going to share with you how do you actually upload those images. And then we're going to, at the end of it, we're going to culminate in a really exciting project where we're going to select a number of different um, images that you have put up onto the website and it will turn into a gallery or an exhibition of children's work. So just what I would like you to do for this week is just to start recording. So get your children to actually record some of their, their images that they've put together in their artworks. And you might like to record some of you, you working with your child and just keep those. And then in the next few weeks, we're gonna give you more instructions on what to do. So I think at this point, um, I've probably talked for an awful lot, so it's probably time if you have some questions, I, and I'm very happy to answer some of those questions, um, and we'll take it from there.
So if anybody's got any questions, feel free just to put them onto the chat. Okay, so as if there's if anybody's got some, you can put them up. If you haven't got any questions, then then I suppose what I'd like to do is just reinforce very quickly just some of the things that we talked about. People want to know from me: Do I need to be artistic um, as a parent? You know, how much should I be controlling what's actually happening? And what, how do you encourage it? So I've got a question there that's asking me, how do I encourage children to draw? I find that if you just have some interesting things around, um, you will find that they will draw, to, you know, it's quite natural for them to actually sit there. So what, what it is is that um, if you, you set up some little stations for them where they've got some drawing materials and then they've also got some... Um, some interesting things in a basket that they can actually pick up and they can draw, that's important. Somebody's asked about colouring in books. Ooh, I have a problem with colouring in books um, because sometimes colouring in books just become too confined in the sorts of things. There's lots and lots of research to show that sometimes colouring in books can actually um, stifle children's creativity rather than sort of opening it up. Because what happens is, I. I, I actually find, you know, a piece of paper without some black line masters on it is more of a problem, you know. Um, you'll probably find that a bit, children can be much more creative if they're just drawing their own drawings um, rather than doing lots and lots of um, colouring in. But there is, there is a lot of research to show that sometimes colouring in books do the opposite. Uh, what have we also got? We spoke about a video recording for an art exhibition. Should that be a video recorded of the child drawing? No, it's not a video. It, they're, they're actually still drawings. They're no, still photographs. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your phone not to, not to do a video. It's just going to be taking photographs of the child's artwork, the child working on their artworks, and then you working with your children because that, that's an important part as well. How to avoid drawing on the wall and other papers. Uh, that's probably a, a difficult one. We're going to actually do one of the sessions in about ooh, six weeks time, where we're actually going to talk about how do you do messy things and, and how do you encourage kids to actually work in a messy way um, without them sort of drawing. It's, it's, you can't, it's very, very difficult to avoid little ones toddlers actually drawing that it's for some reason um, children want to do that straight away that's probably because we're we're talking about doing big things but i think it's just a matter of um giving them paper all the time making sure that they're using large pieces of paper i mean when when kids draw on walls that's because they want to do nice big drawings and so that's one of the things that i encourage is to you to use large pieces of paper and then they can draw on those things rather than drawing Hi, good morning. Yes. Good morning, good morning Mr. Uh, Mr. Aaron. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, Please. thank you. How are you? Uh, Alhamdulillah, fine. Please, can I ask you uh, one question? Yeah, sure. Please, uh, how to help uh, my uh, child? He, uh, he has uh, autistic uh, disorder and he, uh, he uh, is, uh, his age in uh, 15 years. He loves to drawing, but uh, I, I want to, uh, any tips or uh, any some, uh, something to encourage him to help him to draw something nice or benefit for him. Can you right. give me any tips? Um, I, look, I think, I, is, does he have a favorite? truck or cars or is it is there something that he really focuses on yeah he loves to drawing some cars or yeah some... and yeah and i think that that's what i i really think with um with children um they, that's what you should be doing it's finding the thing that they're interested in if he you know and don't worry if he if he draws 
only draws cars and that's all he's going to do, then that's fine. But I, I would find a favorite toy, something that he's got a real interest in and, and get them to actually use that as the, the subject matter and, and go from there. But that's great if he wants to draw. And, and also, in, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be talking about developmental stages and what, what stages children go through when they're actually doing their drawings. Now, one of the stages is scribbling. So, and, and parents get a bit worried that, you know, my, my child is just scribbling and doing nothing else. And then, so we, when we talk about that, you'll find that then there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm not sure, you know, how well your child draws or he doesn't draw. Um, but, you know, scribbling is a, is a normal um, beginning for most children when they're starting to draw. But if, I, if, you, if your child's a little bit older and he wants to draw something, find something that he's really interested in, his favourite car, his favourite toy, part of his, you know, some place in his bedroom that he really, really likes. And if it's a, if it's a secret little place that he likes, then that's fine as well. But thank you for your question. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for helping us. And uh, I wanted to ask you about something. I can yep. start with, with him, about, uh, like what you're learning today from you. You're learning uh, to start to buy uh, some items from kitchen. I can start with him by this one. Is benefit for him or no? Because um, he... I, can can he, you say when you want to buy what? Yeah, when he drawing, he is still struggling. Yeah, and he drawing anything, not uh, specific what he want. I start to buy what he love or what is favorite for him. Like yeah, uh, no, certainly buy what he buy what he's, he's enjoying doing. I think that's the main thing. I mean, it, you, you don't have to have this huge range of different things. Um, you can just buy you know, what, what, what he's interested in. Yeah, thank you. But thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then there's a message on there to say that um, by the end of the week, you'll get a, a, a link to the website about how you can actually put up um, links to the website, which will have this recording. So thank you for that. But I think that we might finish at that point and um, I'm hoping that people have enjoyed this and I hope that, I hope you can understand that what I was trying to do was I was trying to give some parents some ideas about how they could improve their drawing. And then also the sorts of things that you might be able to do with your, your children, which are quite different. So, you know, those, those first drawing activities that we looked at were very much about adults and, and how you can sit there with your child and you can actually um, improve your drawing skills as much as the kids. But thank you very much. And we'll see you next week, I hope. Bye-bye then.